the show really was designed around, you know, real estate as an investment mm -hmm. per se. Um, how do we want to tie that back into the person who's looking at real estate and saying, is this a place where I want to invest? How do I value that real estate? Like you guys just talked about, what are some of the metrics that we want to talk about? Yeah. So good questions. I want to unpack that. Like, how do you start to assess value return on investment? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so like, you need to start looking at the numbers underneath the hood of real estate and then we can start to fit that data together. Does it make so sense? So you're saying it's not as easy as just buy it and it'll make you money? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All Stick right. Stick around. We'll cover more when we come back. All right, gang. Welcome back to the True Wealth Radio Show. I am your host, Dave Littlejohn, with my co-host today. Yeah. Can you go with that? Yep. Matt All right. Dixon. Hey, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to value real estate. Uh, we're going to talk maybe a little bit about how to negotiate on price. Matt has some thoughts on that one. Yeah. They are not good. <laughs> well, if any of you have ever had the unfortunate event of me messaging you on like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, <laughs> I have a general rule. Now, I don't always go by this, but um, especially things that are maybe, yeah. you know, slightly it's, it's overpriced. It's important to start with an insult. <laughs> yeah. <you> know, <laughs> I tend to like to offer half of what the list price is. So you want 4000 let's start at two. Yeah. It's worked too many times for me to not continue to go back to that method. So, that is alarming to me. But he was a highly motivated seller. He needed the money. Why do I bring this up? We can loop this back into real estate. Oh, I can't wait. How motivated is the person to get rid of the, the property, right? That's, yeah. that's something. Well, isn't that a key feature of supply and demand? It is. Right. So it's the, the supply side, but it's also if somebody really has other reasons. This is, by the way, this is relevant to the price of everything, right? Even the stock market, we talk about that a ton, is you don't know the reason somebody has for buying or selling something. This, by the way, is a good segue to talk about how real estate gets priced. I had a little bit of a mini rant about how I don't like that people try to blame landlords for price increases. Okay. And I think that that is a myopic view of how price occurs, right? Because the landlord isn't going to buy real estate that's a losing investment on purpose, right? Nobody yeah. goes out and says, let me overpay for a piece of property that I will turn around and rent for below market value so that I can assure that I am losing money on this deal. There's not a reason to do that because even with taxes, you could simply gift things away if you didn't want to pay taxes on them, right? Give it to a charity, yep. end of the discussion, right? So there's not typically, I, I can't, just can't conjure a reason where somebody would willfully lose money unless it's like they had a stupid bet or something where if they could figure out how to do it, they got paid for I don't know. Like It wouldn't be normal, that's for sure. So if, you, if we think about that backdrop, then you go, like, the landlord has to be at least able to break even. So typically what a landlord's going to do is they're going to put enough money down in a property to secure it. And then for the payments that a renter is going to be making, those should be covering the operating costs or the cost to carry for the landlord. That's the design right? Now you may have to pay for the entire property, right? Have no mortgage whatsoever. And then the rental income covers just sort of the, the, the cost to keep it afloat. And it's really not that different than investing in stocks or anything else. There's no leverage associated with it. You just own the property free and clear. There's some tax reasons real estate's attractive. I'm not trying to over, you know, no. get, get too into that, too deep into that, but it's, it's basically because you can depreciate property and depreciation can offset passive income. But I think it's really important that, because this show is really talking about how do you value it? Is it a good investment? I think it's really important to use, um, you know, some type of calculator to figure out what is your internal rate of return, right? And there's a lot of things that are going to affect that. What is your down payment? What's the interest rate? What are the property taxes? Is there an HOA fee? There's so many different things to consider to look at that and say, you know, am I going to be able to make money yeah. or could I take the money that I have now, put it somewhere else and get a greater rate of return? Right. So here's the first thing you want to do with real estate. You want to figure out how to compare it 
to other investments in a similar fashion. So you're not comparing apples and oranges. Are you talking about like maybe like a real estate investment trust? Like nope. A, no, no. Nope. I'm okay. talking about a methodology for valuing real estate using numbers. Okay. Now, the first thing that you have to consider is that we're not going to be looking at appreciation rate in a property yet. That means like, hey, I buy a property for... So we're leaving appreciation completely yeah, buy, out of the Yeah, buy a property for $500,000, sell it for $600,000. That was appreciation, right? The okay. profit was the value of the home increased, but it doesn't include the profits of the rental payments that are being made. So here's one of the ways that you can compare a property as an investment to other investments. And it's by sort of looking at how much a similar investment would yield. Okay. All right. And one of the, so the term is cap rating. Okay. So a cap rating is a formula where you take the total operating income from the property, right? So this is how much money does it make? So net operating income and divide that by the property value. Let's make this really simple, right? If the property earns a net of $5,000 and the property is worth $100,000, your cap rate is 5%. Okay. Now, if you can invest somewhere else and make more than 5%, then that investment may be more attractive than the real estate. Here's where real estate gets more interesting though. We didn't include appreciation in that formula. What if that property goes from $100,000 to $200,000? Okay. That changes everything. Well, it changes everything because I have 100% appreciation. But if my rent doesn't change, my cap rate actually drops from 5% mm -hmm. to two and a half. So it's a lot more complex than just yeah. looking so, at the initial So one numbers. of the things we can look at is, you know, is the cap rate declining over time because the underlying property is appreciating in value? So if you're evaluating a piece of real estate, what is it that you want to see that says, hey, this is a healthy investment. This might be worth looking at. So are you looking at something where the cap rate is increasing over time? Like, what are you what are you trying to find? So are you talking about like what should investors be looking at? No, or are you saying no. what does David? Yeah, look at? let's just take you. <laughs> Like, okay. Yeah. What do you look at? Like someone comes to you and says, Hey, I've got this piece of real estate. Do you want to buy it from me? What are the magic numbers where it piques your personal interest? Okay. So the first thing is it has to make a sense today, right? Uh -huh. I, I like to make sure that the numbers make sense in the moment. I'm not trying to bet on the idea or that, finagle the numbers to work for you in the future. Yeah. yeah. I'm not trying to overly data fit to a number. So as an example, I would rather wait for the right deal then shoehorn myself into a bad deal and have to pay for it for a long time. So as a, here would be a, an example. Let's say that uh, I found a property and you think that the area is up and coming, but it hasn't occurred yet, okay? That's a wild card. And, and a lot of investors will say, well, I'm gonna bet on the improvement in this area. And if you have a good eye for trends in an area, maybe you've seen like the economic development plan for that the area, maybe the city's gonna be spending money and putting other monies around it, or you're just seeing the the, the price of this area is sort of low and that uh, you, you know another company's gonna be setting up shop and bringing new jobs to town, they're going to be building a new school. There's lots of things could be uh, economic stimulus, right? But whatever the case, right? So, I mean, here's a, a real life example. So, Costco decides that they're going to set up shop and the property on Northeast Stevens becomes more valuable because traffic is going to start going through there. So, commercial real estate becomes more valuable on Northeast Stevens as you're getting close to Costco. Okay, that would be an example yeah. of maybe betting on a, an emerging trend. But when I look at property personally, I like to still make sure that it makes sense right now. I'm not betting on the idea that maybe this will get better. It still needs to make sense now, which means the price I have to pay and the revenue that it's capable of generating need to align well enough that it's still an investment. So it may not be a great, like, great total return yet, but it can't be negative. All right. So are you more favoring like the cap rating there? Are you looking at the more at the internal rate of return? Like what? So what I not? start with cap rating, but then I also apply an expectation for growth, which gives me a better indication of total rate of return. Mm -hmm. And then you also get to consider the tax benefits, okay. right? So the tax benefit of offset income and that you, you may buy a piece of real estate that's less of a bargain, 
but the tax improvement saves you enough money. And like if you have multiple pieces of real estate, an additional piece of real estate may give you a tax benefit that makes the total portfolio more valuable. Can you give the listeners an example of a tax benefit that you're referencing? Depreciation, here? right? Sorry. Let's say that you've got properties that you've already depreciated. And so depreciation, remember, that's the idea that a property, even if it's not wearing out over time, uh, the government says that it is. So you get to let's say, it's, let's keep the math easy, right? Let's say it's 10 years. It's not, but let's say it is. $100,000 property and every year I get to write $10,000 off until in 10 years that property is fully depreciated. It's as if it's valued at zero on paper. If I sell the property, my purchase price looks like it was zero. So mm-hmm. my, my taxable exposure is gonna be 100% of the sale price. But every year I took $10,000 and got to carry that as an expense against the operating income of the property. So if it earned $10,000 and I had a $10,000 tax depreciation, I showed zero income Mm -hmm. for the year. So that tax benefit works out really well. I get 10 years to pay that property down significantly, have significant capital gains in it. The tenants help finance the deal. At the end of this time period, I may intentionally refinance, pull some cash out of that property, buy another property. And that property gives me a whole new set of depreciation. I buy a bigger property with enough depreciation to offset the income from the existing property and the next one.